Hello, everyone. We are live for a very special second edition this week of MMFM Digital, which is brought to you, as always, by the Miami Media and Film Market, my good partner, Patty Arias, and Kamako, led by President Joe Chi. Uh, we want to jump right into this very special conversation today. Uh, it involves two things. One, uh, a feature film that's very close to my heart, uh, but is the brainchild of the writer-director, uh, good friend J.R. Poli, based on the award-winning short film. Uh, we're going to be talking about that film in conjunction with Chris Rannett, uh, who is currently the executive director of Feature Florida Partnerships, which will be launching a very special program next week talking about mental health in the film and entertainment industry. A very important topic, not only for our industry, but, you know, right now in the world in general. Uh, you know, mainly due to the COVID pandemic. And there's so much in our world and our uh, our social stratosphere that has been changing uh, so rapidly over the past few months. And, you know, dealing with the, with the, the major health issues, uh, we sometimes tend to forget that mental health is such a huge part of this. Uh, and the film Marcus, of course, deals a lot with the mental health challenges uh, that we all face. And so I'm very excited to just get right into this conversation uh, to talk to JR and Chris, but first, I want to give you guys the exclusive trailer for the feature film, Marcus, and then we'll jump right into the chat. The distraction. It's the thing I look for every damn minute of every day. A broken man, some see. It's what stops my mind from wandering into places I hate being. How you holding up? Same as any other night. But that'll change. You'll probably blame everything. How was the last time you saw Gabby? Just last week, and she's fine, no thanks to you. Did you guys know that Gabby is pregnant? <sighs> Need to find her, man. Any chance you know where I should be looking? Oh. oh I am worthless. I am hopeless. I'm just ashamed of what's become of me. Why are you here? Why now? You know I didn't leave because of you, right? Right. You left because of you, or mom, or money, or your friends, or lack thereof, or whatever. You left at a time when a girl needs her father the most. You left me. I was ashamed, Gabby. I was ashamed of who I was. I was ashamed of what I had become. job on the trailer jr welcome guys to the show what's going on <laughs> what's up bro hi chris how are you um well how about you good and i just uh want to thank you for for jumping right out of your your holiday and right into right into business for such an important topic so i really want to thank you for joining us as well well you're welcome nobody really gets a holiday these days right absolutely yeah. <laughs> we're all connected in one way or another uh, but, you know, I, I mentioned it in the intro, this is such an important topic. And, you know, uh, when we were kind of chatting about doing this, it just so happened that, you know, I've been working with JR for the past couple of years in this film, Marcus, which started as a short. So, you know, I, I kind of want to start with that and then segue into the conversation with Chris. Uh, and JR, you know, obviously a lot of our fans know who you are and, and about Marcus. But for those that don't, uh, particularly maybe some of Chris Rannick's folks who may watch this later, tell us a little bit of, about the genesis of the film Marcus. 
Yeah, I mean, Marcus came from um, a short film, like you said before. I wrote it, uh, directed it back in 2018. Well, we, st we filmed it in 2017. We released it in 2018. Um, it came basically from uh, some pretty dark moments that I was living through at the time uh, and, you know, dipped in and out of uh, since then, you know. Um, I was feeling a lot. I was probably at the lowest part of my life when I wrote it. And um, I, it, it was more of a, you know, therapeutical release, if that makes sense, uh, to write that script. And then uh, after I wrote it, I handed it to my wife. I handed it to Owen, which plays the lead. Uh, and they loved it. And we decided, to, you know, hey, let's make this a quick short, you know, a couple nights of filming and possibly a couple, you know, weeks of editing. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then, uh, you know, we did a good uh, run with the festivals and then 2018 and 2019, and we got a lot of good feedback. We were able to get some traction, and then we decided to make it into a feature, which uh, that's the trailer for. Feature right. premiered in uh, Miami, Miami Film Festival in March. And uh, we're kind of just like everything else and everyone else waiting for COVID <laughs> to kind <laughs> of do its thing so we could run with it, you know? Yeah, I know. And obviously, you know, the message is so important and we are working actively to get the film out so as many folks hopefully can see it as possible in the near future. Uh, but, you know, and, and again, just kind of segueing now over to what Chris has been working on. Uh, and, you know, this kind of my idea to kind of bring you guys together is because, you know, separately, uh, Chris had launched uh, an initiative via uh, Florida Feature Partnerships, specifically to tackle mental health issues within the local entertainment industry. So, Chris, if you could also just tell us a little bit about yourself and sort of your, your background with the partnership and why you decided to start this initiative. Well, the short version, and, and by the way, hello, guys. And, and I, I have to say, uh, JR, you know, you, you, you let me watch the entirety of Marcus the other day, and I'm still blown away by it. What a, what a superb piece of work. Superb piece of acting, superb piece of cinematography, really. Um, I can't wait till we can put some muscle behind it and get it out there in real distribution. It, it deserves to be seen. Uh, me, I think a lot of you know me, maybe a lot of you don't. Um, you know, I'm a film worker, ex key craft service guy. I'm president of Local 477 of the IATSC, so I represent film workers for the state of Florida uh, on a union level. Um, and I and, and several other very um, imaginative and creative and powerful people created Feature Florida Partnerships a few years ago, and, and we're moving it forward as a nonprofit uh, with an emphasis on reinvigorating Florida indigenous filmmaking. So uh, we are reaching out to people like JL and many, many others trying to find ways that we can support bringing uh, uh, grassroots Florida filmmaking back to life and, and, and making it larger than life, making it where it's supposed to be. Um, to jump to the subject of today, uh, within my world and, and, and you know, really within my world of, of being a film worker, we've seen um we've we've lost three people in the last three months to suicide mm -hmm. which has really really impacted me and so many of the other brothers and sisters um, who worked with these people these were friends and um the reasons behind everything you know it lies in substance abuse or depression or or, or whatever you want to shake a stick at but the pandemic has has tilted the scales the pandemic is pushing people over the edge and uh, looking forward we don't see the pandemic leaving anytime real soon the next couple of months i think are going to be critical so um i personally am on am, am on alert um, we need to help people who are teetering on the edge and and, that, and that's what this effort is all about um i'll turn it back to you guys and you know, I'll speak about the event in a little while, but let me turn it back to you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. And that's, that is important work. And, you know, kind of going back to you, JR, and I know that, you know, obviously it's, it's a great film. It's a dramatic film. It has many qualities. Um, but, you know, sort of in an ideal world, how, how do you want the public to receive the film? And what, what would be in an ideal scenario, uh, the best way for folks to help utilize this that are struggling themselves? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the intention was when I started uh, developing the full feature version of this, um, 
the thought was to make it as as raw and as honest as possible. Um, so I did use my own uh, voice, but I also kind of tapped into, you know, like Chris said, uh, a, a bunch of old buddies that I had that had committed suicide. And I knew their stories, I knew their backgrounds, I knew what happened uh, during their rough times. And I kind of integrated this one main character, Marcus, uh, by combining all of our stories uh, in a nutshell. Um, so the I, I would hope that if you watch this film and you're either dealing with a, a mental illness or you know somebody, you're living with somebody, a friend, anybody, you know, neighbor, uh, that you would kind of uh, understand it more after watching this. You would kind of relate to how to speak to someone who's suffering from mental illness. Uh, if you're uh, a child, if you know, if you're a, a loved one or even a parent of someone dealing with mental illness, um, I, I would hope that you, what you take away from this would be, you know, uh, just basically how to sympathize and how to uh, kind of live life with this illness as opposed to just, you know, hope, you know, like end it basically. Like so many people end their lives and just cut it short because of it. So I'm, I, that's, that's kind of where, where, what I intended when I was in the middle of this. Right. No, and I, I mean, yeah, it's very, uh, you know, such a personal story for you, but obviously the intention is broad and, Obviously, it goes, you know, way beyond the entertainment industry. So many folks in so many different walks of life uh, who had been suffering even before the pandemic. And I think one of the issues that we're finding now is that, you know, folks who are seeking or could have been seeking help beforehand, because so much of our attention is focused on trying to get rid of this COVID, which is a terrible pandemic, are, are not really focusing on other parts of our mental and physical well-being right now. Uh, you know, and I've heard also stories about doctors afraid that people are not getting regular screenings for cancer right now. They're not doing their regular heart checkups. Mental health is a big part of that as well. So, you know, what can we do to get people to also focus on the other health aspects of their lives during this time? I think is. Yeah. I mean, Chris, you want to, do you have an answer for that? Or do you want me to take, go run with that? And, and look, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, Chris, and I know, look, none of us are mental health professionals. We're, you know, we're filmmakers, we're artists. We have, had personal dealings with it. So anything we say here, obviously, is just based on our personal experiences. It's not professional advice, which for anyone out there that is suffering right now, you know, the, the most important thing you can do is, is to outreach to a professional, even during these times, uh, and seek health, help, help that's personal to you. But I just think that we're just touching on, on our personal experiences with the situation. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll immediately, the first thing that I always go to and I always tell everybody is, you know, besides the obvious of what everybody's saying, you know, go get, you know, go seek help, call someone, um, is distraction. And I've said this from the beginning, distraction, everybody sees that as such a negative thing. But in mental health, it's, it's the most positive thing ever. You have to distract your mind. Um, and when you look at all these um, uh, industry people that, have, you know, that we've lost over the last few years, from musicians to actors to reality show stars, um, they've, they've all basically committed suicide when they were alone. They were somewhere in a hotel room by themselves. They may have been at home by themselves. Um, distraction is a big thing. And I know everybody, you know, not everybody has someone that they live with. They might live alone, but, um, you got to get the hobbies going. You have to get something that, that will kind of, you know, fill the day. And that's the problem with now with COVID, as we mentioned, Chris, is it's hard to distract yourself. You're kind of just sitting at home, but uh, you, Fact, you know, you, there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing. The, on that. Yeah, I'll let you go. Yeah, because I think you're hitting the nail on the head. You know, I think about the three people we lost and one of them was a very close friend of mine. But, you know, all three of them were hardworking film workers. OK, going to my world, the film worker world. Well, you know, their distraction was Monday morning. They're going to go out to, you know, seven o'clock call and they're going to work their asses off for the whole week. Um, so when you yank that out from underneath somebody who is a working person you know they might have their 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 problems they might be on the edge but they know man i'm going to work monday morning and i'm going to be with my brothers and my sisters i'm going to be doing what i love i'm going to be making a paycheck all of a sudden that's gone that's kind of a last straw that's a distraction that you know work is it is it a, a real distraction and and when you take it yeah. away wow you know, wow, what, what, what do you do? So yeah. that, that, I don't know, that's my take on that. 
Yeah, it's it's devastating. I mean, uh, you know, I, I just spent six days on a on a shoot now with you know my brothers and, and sisters, and I tell you that some of these same crew as Marcus basically, and uh, these guys, you know, you can spend in, you know twelve, fifteen, sixteen hours a day with, and uh, completely take your mind off of everything, and that that only leaves you with X amount when you when you add sleep in. And I know a big part of mental health is the lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. I understand that one hundred percent firsthand, but. You know, it does keep you going, knowing that, hey, tomorrow I'm going to get up and go somewhere else. And, uh, yeah, over the past few months, it's been terrible. And not just the film world, it's everybody. I mean, you know, just if it's you work everybody, for... It's everybody, yeah, but it comes yeah. in different... Yeah, it comes in different manifestations in the film world. You know, we have our um, our togetherness, the fact that we've known mm-hmm. each other sometimes for 10, 20, 30 years. You know, we've been working with the same people. Uh, and when you all of a sudden can't get up in the morning and go see these people who, you know, they might not know what you're dealing with, but they know who you are and you feel yeah. comfortable and at home with these people. All of a sudden, you're not able to interact with those people, the people who have always been in your life. Um, you know, I try to put myself in the shoes of my brothers that I lost. And, and think about how that felt to them. Um, yeah. right. So talking about resources, if, if I can jump in here, JL, yeah. um, you know, what we're doing, Feature Florida Partnerships exists to nurture Florida indigenous film. And we're coming up with programs uh, that will support Florida's filmmakers. But one of the first things we keyed into, because I had done a seminar with the executive director of Behind the Scenes, which is one of the prominent charities in our world. Uh, And I encourage everybody to go to Behind the Scenes, uh, Google it, look for Behind the Scenes Charity, and you'll find out what they're all about. But we did this seminar on mental health and suicide prevention uh, outreach, and we did it just for the IATSC locals in the state of Florida. It was well attended, and that triggered in my mind that we need to bring it out to a broader a broader world because what behind the scenes has prepared is a very, very um, well organized access to the various resources, uh, not just for suicide prevention, but for, you know, uh, uh, drug dependency and alcoholism and and you name it. I mean, the the demons that plague people, how to get resources uh, to help um, support people who are dealing with these demons. Um, And, um, the, uh, the, the presentation is next Wednesday, the uh, 19th at 2 o'clock. Uh, it's a Zoom presentation. It's by pre-registration only, um, but you can go to the Pictures Up Florida Facebook page, which is the Facebook page we use for Future Florida Partnerships, Pictures Up, comma, Florida, uh, and the registration link is there. Or you can contact me directly at chrisronung at gmail.com. Um, so I really hope that the people who are listening to this, if you, if you want to know the resources and the approach that behind the scenes, you know, they, they base this on, 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 on comprehensive, uh, uh, procedures and policy, if you will, in the mental health industry, how to talk with somebody, how to be with somebody who is on the edge and considering suicide. And this is something that, you know, before I became deeply involved in it, which was about a year ago, I was like everybody else. If, if, I, if somebody talked to me about depression or suicide, I didn't know what to say. And I was scared. And my tendency was not to say anything, which is the wrong thing. It, the right thing is to say something, to say, I'm here, talk to me. Uh, and have certain questions to ask and certain ways to to support somebody who who you know is considering suicide Um, don't be scared of it go forward because that person needs you and there are certain ways that you can talk to that person um, that can be very helpful so that's what this presentation is all about and i hope a lot of people will tune in it's for the florida film community at large i don't care who you are what you do connected to entertainment in Florida, you're invited to attend this presentation. Wow, thanks Chris so much for doing that and hosting that event. Uh, but it's interesting you touched on a point there and I do hope everyone checks out that event on the 19th uh, next week uh, that Chris is hosting. And for those uh, you know, that also, if you can't get in touch with Chris, we'll also put information in the comments and the links uh, below so that you can also uh, get in touch with Chris and, and register. 
Uh, but one thing you touched on, I think is important, and I want to throw that back to JR, is this idea of stigma and this fear about yeah. talking about the issue. Uh, and JR, talk a little bit about that aspect of it. Yeah, it's it's incredible because he mentioned, you know, uh, not knowing what to say, but that's that also I know he meant it as in you're being, you know, asked by someone who's dealing with mental health. Uh, but on the other side, uh, the people dealing with mental health, I mean, it, there is there is still they feel that there's still the stigma um, on being able to discuss this, you know, and I did. Listen, we premiered this movie in March on March 7th. I'm telling you, I told my mom I was dealing with this on March 1st. Wow. Days before, only because I knew she would be there and only because I do open up at Q&As and I knew this Q&A was going to lead to talking about why this film came and I knew she would find out. And, and listen, I've been dealing with this for, you know, eight, nine years is, I mean, I, I probably for longer, you know, for all I know, but I, that's when I first started really dealing with it. Um, and I never mentioned it to her, um, not because she what frowned against it, uh, mostly because she just has so much on her plate, you know, and, and I didn't need her worrying about something else. Um, but there is this stigma where you, you, you're, you I'm concerned that this is going to be a problem to her. I'm concerned this may put her in a different way where now every phone call to me is going to start off and end with, are you dealing? Are you okay? You know, kind of like, you know, just trying to see where I'm, where I'm mentally. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a different relationship that I would have with my mom just based on my mental health. Thankfully, she took it so well, and it hasn't been like that. Um, I definitely didn't want her finding out in the audience, <laughs> you know, during a Q&A, that would have been terrible. So that's why I told her, you know, the week before. But, but yeah, I mean, on top of that, you have actors in this film, you know, uh, Owen Miller and Keldrick Mobley. I mean, there's so many people that deal with it that have even confessed saying, listen, in my neighborhood, uh, you could not bring this up. And I'm talking about now, you know, the African-American community. Uh, they, they, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very difficult to bring this up. It's not something that's just easily said. Uh, so that was a, a, a major thing uh, that Keldrick himself, uh, himself uh, told me uh, when, when I cast him was, you know, yeah, he, he, you know, you can't bring this up in the African-American and or, nor the Hispanic community. And I know that from my, my end. And Jose, you can, you can go with that as well. You know, it's not something that's easily spoken about. Um, so yeah, there's still this, you know, it, it's weird. You feel like something's wrong with you. Um, I, I, you know, you're nervous about bringing it up to your employers. Although now there are employers who offer that, you know, uh, I guess it's, you know, um, some kind of like, what am I looking for? Uh, you know, help on the side, they're offering some kind of, you know, um, psychiatry help or something. A lot right. of a lot of employees. Yeah, a lot of human now. resources departments that are starting yeah. to open up to that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean we're still we're still not there. I mean, there's still people that, that feel like this is all in your mind. I've I've heard everything from butch up, literally butch up to uh, get over it. Mm. You know, those aren't those are, you know, fuel words, you know, you're just those aren't helpful. fire. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's not helpful. So. And you know, JR, I, I have to interject, you know, um, and, and I'm not saying that I don't deal with being down and being depressed, but you know, I'm, I'm one of these people who looks for the right words to say. Um, and, and to, you know, again, you, you, you don't want to say the wrong thing, which is the fear, but saying something is essential. Understanding that, you know, even if you kind of, I don't know, say the wrong thing, opening up and saying, I'm here and, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to understand, I'm willing to understand, I understand so far, you know, talk with me, work with me, help me because I want to help you, I want to be there, I want to, I want to participate with you. I mean, these are the things coming from my perspective that, you know, people are learning and the resources that are being put into play are going to the employers, which is why you're seeing a new awareness and a new attempt to understand and provide resources to help people who need it. So it's, right. it's a, it's a grand game. That's very, very, you know, broad based. Um, and the stigma that you talk about, I mean, I remember when I was a kid and I'm way old. So, you know, going back into the fifties and sixties and seventies, that stigma was every place. Nobody, I don't care what color or demographic you came from. Yeah. Uh, nobody talked about it. So it's an evolving process all the way through. 
It is, but it's also handed down and you still have parents. I mean, you know, uh, I, I know 40 year old parent, you know, 40 year olds who have parents are in their seventies and, and, and eighties who do not want mm -hmm. their child. They've taught their child. That's something you don't discuss. You know, how many times yeah. does a boy at 10 or 12 cry about anything? And the dad is saying, you yeah. can't cry. You're not supposed to cry. Even in today's world, you're not supposed to cry. And you're a man, you know, you know yeah, yeah, exactly. You're just supposed to cry about that. Um, so, so yeah, you know, it, it's, it's definitely there. And, and I'll tell you what my wife, and I'll bring my wife into this because she, it, again, not everybody has a significant other. You might be alone at this moment. Maybe you just came from a breakup. Uh, but one, but you can do this with friends or for family. Uh, my wife knows when I'm down just by looking at me. She could see it in my eyes. And I'm telling you within, within the day, she's got something for me. Whether if it's at the, you know, months ago going to the movies, you know, and not nowadays, but, and also last year going to a ball game, maybe, you know, she's ready to go. And she's got something that she would come up with game night, you know, she'll bring in the kids and hey, you know, here are a bunch of cards we're going to do. She takes immediately takes my mind off of it uh, and helps. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the time being, but that's what it is, right? It's day by day. It's step by step. So, um, so that's, I mean, again, if you have a neighbor, you know, and you see it, that, that something's going on, you feel it. I've had instances where I just by Facebook post, I would see something that's up with someone that I know suffers from mental illness. And I would literally mm -hmm. call them up uh, and say, hey, you know, what's going on? And just have a chat, you know, about a movie we saw yeah. recently, whatever. Just have a chat. And you don't yeah. even have to bring up mental yeah. health. I mean, that's the thing. You don't have to bring it up. I know everyone is worried about saying the wrong thing, which is the right way to think about it. You don't want to say it, but you can come up and just talk about anything, you know, and that that for the moment takes somebody can take somebody out of it. Hmm. No, those are all really good points, guys, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and so, you know, obviously we talked about the stigma, we talked about finding the distractions, uh, but it seems like, you know, an important message as well for, for anyone that's dealing with it or has someone in their life dealing with it. It seems like, you know, this aspect of finding hope or meaning in your life, something to look forward to. And it doesn't have to be the big grand thing, like I want to be a movie star, or these sort of things that are, you know, sort of out there. But just the everyday little something to look forward to. Like I said, a lot of folks are out of work right now, so they can't look forward to a job. Uh, they can't look forward to, you know, going to a nice restaurant or, or just hanging out with friends at a bar or, or whatever. But, you know, there's still, like you said, little things that you can look forward to, whether it's, you know, something cool you just saw on Netflix and you just call your buddy to chat about it. Yeah. So the I therapy mean, doesn't have to be so direct, right? And, well, and hence the importance of, of, of sports coming back. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's, you know, yeah. listen, I, I'm one for, oh, my God, how are they going to do this? You know, it's like in the Marlins, they just had a, this big outbreak, and the Cardinals are dealing with the same thing in St. Louis. Um, and, and it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I can see why they're, they're kind of rushing to bring this out. Everybody's – it is a business, and I understand these owners still trying to make their money, and the networks are still trying to make their money. Got it. But on the same end, I mean, there are plenty of people who need that. You know, there are plenty of people that need to watch that basketball game or that hockey game, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just it's anything. It can be anything. It's just a film, um, just having – and that's the issue. You can't really technically have friends over now, you know. I mean, you, you can, I guess, but you have to keep that distance. But, you know, it's, it, it, it's difficult, and, and I can see why – uh, why you're doing this, Chris, 100%. I, I mean, it's, it makes total sense, especially at this time. And, and I'll tell you this, as far as crew members go and, 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 and filming, I've worked with a lot of crew members who do nothing but travel, and they don't have families. Yeah. And this is all they do. I mean, they'll take – I mean, I worked on Top Chef in 2008, and half the people on there were with Magical Elves. Basically, they, they contracted with Magical Elves, and they'll do Top Chef, Project Runway, and then there was a wedding show back then. I can't remember the name. But it was three months apiece. So for nine months, they did nothing but yeah. travel and, and living in hotels. And now they're literally stuck in their home when all they knew was to be around these people, the same people for day in and day out. Yeah. You know, so and, and they don't have family. So, I mean, they, they you know, technically chose the, the, the industry over a family at this point. And they're young guys. They're in their 20s or 30s. But I can't even imagine what those guys are going through right now. No, I, I know a lot of them, too. And, um, yeah. you know, picking up the phone and calling. And just like you said, you're not calling to see how, how you know, how you, how you how's your mental health. You're calling to say, hey, you know, I watched the Yankees last night. Okay. The, yeah. the Yankees are bang. 
back. Thank God, you know. So you, know, you just talk, but people are alone. A lot of people, young and old, are living alone. You know, thank God I have a, you know, I have a wife. And, and we like each other. We love each other. You know? So we've, we've gone through this, what, it's approaching five months now. But, you know, we have each other. But a lot of people I know don't have anybody. Uh, they might be financially precarious or not, um, but they're alone. So just the phone call on a regular basis, you know, every couple of days, hey, you know, what you doing? What you watched last night on Netflix, whatever, mm. and let the conversation flow. And, and we do a lot of yeah. that, my wife and I. Um, and, and that's the key. That's really the key. Yeah, but those are all really good points. And, you know, going back to, you know, the industry that we're in, where it's entertainment, sports, media, uh, so much has been broken down the past few months in terms of what's essential and what's non-essential. Uh, and I think so much of that is subjective because, like you said, these little escapes and these entertainments we have, whether it's watching a baseball game or a movie on Netflix or Amazon, uh, or, you know, just chatting with someone about a Facebook post or a YouTube video. Those are just mini outlets uh, that we all need right now. And I think what's happening is a lot of folks who ordinarily may not have been suffering from depression and had very busy lives and very full social lives have been shell-shocked into a new reality. And, you know, I don't think that all depression is genetic. I think it can be situational. Mm -hmm. It's 100% uh, there. Yeah, there's definitely situational yeah. depression, 100%. It's a certain... It's a thing. I mean, you, you can be depressed, you know, if you're doing bad financially and you're in a rut. And then once you come into some money, you're perfectly fine. And then once that rut comes back, you go back. And, and 100 percent, there's situational depression. And right now, there's probably, you know, a massive chunk of this population dealing with that specific depression right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's absolutely right. And so I'm, I'm very happy that we're having this conversation. And, you know, I'd love to go longer, but I know, you know, I really want this to sort of be an ongoing discussion. And as you know, JR, part of the reason we created all the social media handles for Marcus is to start these discussions right. online for folks that, you know, may be feeling watching this now or later on the link that may be going through something. You know, uh, I know that JR, myself, our Marcus page is very open and very responsive. If anyone just wants to reach out and just talk about movies or talk about anything uh, when they feel like they need to find, like you said, that, that distraction, uh, that, yeah. that those resources we have are available there are national hotlines, um, and I know that a lot of those are very confidential, so you don't have to fear about someone giving away your information or employers finding out or relatives. Uh, and then obviously everything that Chris is going to be doing with his webinar and his resources, particularly for the Florida production workers. Yeah. 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 I, I yeah mean, that's what I, behind I, the I, scenes is all about. Go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm waiting. Go ahead. Chris, go ahead. Right. All right. Well, I mean, that's – that's kind of the beauty of behind the scenes. None of, none of this stuff is industry specific, but behind the scenes is from our industry. So they're pointing us at resources, uh, specifically mental health and emotional support resources, actually a way to contact um, psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health workers who are familiar with our industry. They have, they have a, a database of mental health workers and psychiatrists who understand the, you know, peculiar stresses of what we do. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, that's a great resource. You know, you can go to somebody and in confidence, you can talk to that person and, and they, he or she will understand um, more about our industry than you're just, you know, run of the mill person. So that's just one of the many resources that they're talking about. Um, and I'm very, very proud to have brought behind the scenes forward here in Florida. I, again, I, I really hope that a lot of people tune into this. Absolutely. Um, thank you so, so much for that, you Chris. Guys, what you guys have done with Marcus, um, that is just brilliant work. And, and thank you for that. And now, I appreciate now I'll be quiet. that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no thanks. Yes. Yeah. From, from your lips to a distributor's ears. Chris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, JR, any closing thoughts and then uh, we'll wrap it up. No, I mean, that, that's it. I, I had told you before, Jose, that, I mean, this was way before COVID happened and I told you, you know, I, I would, I would love to see each city have something where like, kind of like a YMCA, like, you know, some kind of building that's on, you know, and, you know, open at all hours of the day. And I know it's hard to staff and all that, but you know, there's one thing to have a, a hotline you can call, but some people, you know, they don't want to, they don't know who they're talking to. It's, it's a face-to-face -face thing. And it'd, be, it'd just be 
amazing to have a room where if you're de- you know dealing with something and you're you're down on a row, you can actually walk in there, talk to someone in person. Maybe there's a whole room full of distractions, let's say video games and arcade games, whatever it is, you know, just movies, you know, and it's just something to get your mind off something. That'd be phenomenal to have in a, every major city. Uh, some organization out there has to start coming up with something like that. You don't, you don't even have to pay the people because just like, you know, AA, let's say, most of the, most of the you know, the, the people there are former alcoholics who are just kind of volunteering their time to help someone else, you know, so it's almost the same kind of the same thing and I, I just I think that would that would help a ton of people as well that's a great idea yeah we could have yeah. the, uh, the 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 Marcus rooms nationwide where people can yeah. come and hang out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all branding and uh, but yeah again thank you so much Chris for everything you're doing JR great film talented cast I love the landlord by the way he's fantastic um, <laughs> and yeah. and we're definitely yeah. gonna be uh, we're hopefully be seeing a lot more of this film and hearing a lot more from Chris uh, and again, to all the viewers out there, uh, we really hope that you do stay in touch with both of these, uh, you know, both with JR as a filmmaker and the Project Marcus, as well as, you know, Chris and every, all the great, great work he's doing with, with Feature Florida Partnerships as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll make sure I, what, I send the link to you, JL, and then you'll make it available to people. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll make all the links available. And then once this uh, goes into a link format, then we'll be sharing the link to this video as well. So you can share it just like a YouTube clip. Sounds fantastic. Thank you, awesome. gentlemen. Well, th- thanks guys awesome. for taking the time. I'm going to put you on standby. Chris. Don't go away. And I'll just say goodbye yep. to the group and I'll be right back with you guys. One sec. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Another week on MMFM Digital. Uh, this was a very special one, very close to our hearts here. Uh, and I want to thank once again my partner, Patty Arias, uh, and the entire Miami Media and Film Market crew uh, and Team Chemical for helping us put these events together every week, uh, both virtually and in person. Uh, we hope to be back in person soon when it's safe. Uh, but in the meantime, we do hope that you continue to follow Chris's work with Florida Future Partnerships. We will keep you posted on everything going on with Marcus. We'll post the social media pages as well. And for that, this will conclude our week here at MMFM Digital. I'm your host, J.L. Martinez. And as I always say, happy streaming.